Hello folks, this is Sula once again. You're listening to another video for League of Legends. This time we're going to be looking at Sivir, who has just been reworked in the most recent patch as I record this. This is taken from another one of these high elo solo queue games. In this game, Sivir is going to be played by Cat8. And uh, if you watch the patch review video that I did a number of days ago, I said that I didn't think Sivir was going to be all that strong after her rework. That was not correct. In fact, Sivir has been, is actually very strong after the rework. So uh, I was wrong about that. Sivir has actually been played nonstop ever since her rework and has been played with a lot of success at high elo. And for some reason, this video starts at the five minute mark, but we'll just reset it right there. So let's take a quick look at Sivir. Again, the, the biggest thing that Sivir has gotten since the rework is her ultimate, which is really, really useful for chasing people down. And I don't know if it was just that people were had forgotten about Sivir or weren't used to that ability or something like that, but she actually, is uh, quite strong after the rework. So I'm going to set this up. We'll go through in this video, we'll look at an example of a well-played Sivir game, was able to find this. Obviously this is a good game for Sivir, otherwise I wouldn't be using this one. And just try to demonstrate why exactly Sivir has been very strong since this rework. Uh, actually look at this, we've got an early invade coming in here from the blue team. There is the boomerang blade, pretty good damage. Flash for a flash, Thresh is going to try to flash and catch our silver player here, Cat 8, but not going to get it. By the way, nice ward put down by the support. Uh, spotting that the blue team actually backed off after that invade. But anyway, we've got we got a, a Teemo in this game. We've got Mandatory Cloud playing a mid lane Trundle. This is a, an unusual game to say the least, but as I said, our focus is going to be on the bottom lane where we actually have a Sivir Annie pairing. Yeah, who would have who would have thought this like two or three months ago? You'd be seeing Sivir Annie and that would actually be pretty successful. There's the red, what is it, the Red Riding Hood Annie skin, which does looks very different from how it originally looked when they gave Annie a, her own visual upgrade. Well, anyway, so Sivir, of course, is a ranged AD, or as Riot likes to term them now, a marksman. And uh, it really is is a bit unusual. So her basically her gimmick is she has the shortest range of any AD. She only has 500 range. Most ADs uh, have either, or most ADs are either 525, 550, or 575, and then there's some that are longer than that. But she has the shortest range, and that does make it hard for her to trade. But she compensates for this <clears throat> by having the ability of her boomerang to go a much longer distance when she uses her Q, her boomerang blade. And she also, of course, has the ability to uh, get extra range on her ricochet. That is when she toss, you know, auto attacks, she gets bounces with the boomerang. And then her ultimate gives her a huge amount of movement speed, which we'll look at as we go forward. But, uh, wow, actually gets pulled right here. Let's watch this little fight. So it is Sivir and Annie up against an Ezreal and a Thresh lane. Let me go through and highlight some of what these skills do as we keep an eye on this. Actually, Cat 8 got chunked pretty pretty good there right at the start of this particular match. All right, so passive, anytime Sivir hits an enemy champion with a basic attack or ability, she gains 50 movement speed for two seconds. So again, this is what one of the things that Sivir gets to try and compensate for her lack of range. So if you watch the little status bar, anytime she auto attacks or uses a skill, she gets the little movement speed bonus. There it is right there, fleet of foot. You can see, and uh, actually she can stack, she can get the, Stack this up, what? Along with her ricochet? Was it gets, um, was it? No, actually that comes from her ult. Never mind, I'm thinking of something else. So ignore what I just said. Uh, basically, so anytime she hits an, oh, it hits an enemy champion. Okay, so it's not for minions, only enemy champions. So she gets this. Anyway, we've got a nice grab coming in from Thresh. We've got a trade going on here. Annie's gonna flash out, exhaust has come out, and it looks like Sivir and Annie are gonna get back out of this. And they did not win that particular trade. So yeah, that didn't work out so great. Okay, <clears throat> trying to clarify her passive only functions when she hits an enemy champion. But 50 movement speed is a pretty big deal. So anyway, that is, as I said, something that allows her to compensate for her lack of range. And this will proc off of ricochets as well. If she gets a ricochet that hits an enemy champ, then she'll get the bonus uh, extra movement speed. Anyway, this is pretty daring coming forward like this, actually very low. But right there, Ezreal, oh, it's gonna go very low. Sivir down to 10 HP, but not going to fall right there. As I said, it was very, very dangerous to come forward like that. Uh, but I guess Cat 8 did have his barrier up, didn't use it, gonna have to go back and buy right now. Okay, actual skills for Sivir, not just the passive. Her Q is Boomerang Blade, hurls her crossblade like a boomerang, deals dam physical damage to the first target hit, 
20% reduced damage to each subsequent target down to a minimum of 40%. So the boomerang just goes out in a straight line. The range is quite good. I'd say the range is roughly like 1500, maybe like 1200 to 1500 range. I don't know exactly how far it is, but the distance is pretty good. It just goes out in a straight line and it has the potential to hit both on the trip out and on the return trip as well. It being a boomerang, of course. So the ideal way to use this would be to hit someone like right at the tail end of the range so that they get a double hit from the boomerang blade. That's usually how you can get the most damage on this. A little bit tricky to do when you're tossing it out at max range, but that is the way that you generally get the most damage is to hit somebody right at the tail end of it. Uh, this is her longest range skill and you will see Sivir typically maxing this first because it deals very good damage in lane. Even though it's a straight shot, it's not the easiest skill shot to dodge. It will deal damage through minions and you will see uh, you know, you will take a lot of damage if you get hit by this. Right there, Thresh is going to miss his Q, and not going to see any more of that. So Ezreal and Thresh, go back, and go ahead and purchase, and heal up. Okay, W, Ricochet, this was reworked slightly in the Sivir rework. Her Q was unaffected, was not touched in the rework. Ricochet, Sivir's next three basic attacks bounced to nearby targets. They deal physical damage and 50% uh, of total attack damage to each subsequent target. Only the first target is affected by on-hit effects. Each target may only be hit by once by each ricochet. So, as it says, whenever you pop this, their next three auto-attacks will bounce. Uh, the attack can bounce, I believe, an unlimited number of times, if, that's, if I remember this correctly. Yeah, I mean, the, the ricochets can bounce as much as they want, but each target can only get hit once per, by each ricochet. You can't, you know, you can't get hit twice by the same ricochet. Anyway, we should see this in action when they get back in lane. This is one reason why Sivir has always had really good wave clear. She can pop her Q and then her W and she can clear a wave really, really fast with the combination of these two. And anyway, of course, this is also good for, uh, also quite used for harass. And it also has an effect with her ultimate. Uh, as you can see, once she scales her ultimate, Sivir gets 40% attack speed while Ricochet is active, uh, which will be quite frequently in the late game. So it gets a pretty big bonus from that as well. All right, now another thing that was changed in the rework was Sivir's E, her spell shield. Sivir creates a magical barrier for three seconds, blocks the next incoming enemy ability, so blocks the next spell basically. If it's blocked by the shield, Sivir regains 60 mana, and you get more mana back as you put more points in the skill. Anyway, this is the same as the skill was before she had their spell shield previously, but the difference is now the spell shield is no cost. There's no mana to use it. Before, it cost a, a decent amount of mana to use, but then you get a lot of mana back if you successfully blocked a spell. So what that meant was if you blocked a spell, then you know you get a lot of mana back, but if you didn't block a spell, it was kind of wasteful. Now you can feel free to pop the spell shield very frequently because there's you know there's no cost for missing a failing a spell shield. Uh, all it has is a cooldown. Now, granted, yes, the cooldown is long. It's a long cooldown at 22 seconds. But there's not much of a penalty for missing other than the skill just being on cooldown. So it's, it's much less punitive than it was before. There's much less penalty for missing a spell shield, basically. And that's kind of the difference right there. So this, this skill got buffed pretty heavily in the Sivir rework. It is much better, much easier to use now. Much less painful to miss a spell shield compared to previously. Cat 8's actually doing a nice job of dodging some skill shots from Ezreal right there. Uh, all right, and then finally, Sivir's ultimate on the hunt, which has a new graphic for it. It's been called on the hunt forever, but has a new little graphic. Anyway, well, I guess we'll get to that in a second because Cat Date's gonna be pulled in right now and gonna have to be careful. Anyway, out comes the Boomerang Blade, in comes the gank, and that's gonna be a kill on Thresh. Vi got there just as that fight got started. Sivir may have accident, may have deliberately gotten pulled in there, don't know. Anyway, Ramus is now going to come in. He's going to get stunned initially by Annie. Pops the taunt, but you don't really want to taunt Annie, per se. Probably want to get that taunt onto Sivir, if at all possible. And they're going to go ahead and look to back, or maybe not, actually. Looks like they might stick around here. A little bit low. This is a lane that doesn't have any sustain in it. A lot of damage, but no sustain in it. And uh, they're just hanging around right now. So I guess we'll take this opportunity to go ahead and take a quick look at Sivir's ult. Right there is the Boomerang Blade, and that's going to wave clear that lane. Uh, you also saw Ricochet used there, and again, that's one of Sivir's strength, is she wave clears really well. A, Q, a QW combination, and you will nuke down a creep wave really, really fast. All right, so her ultimate on the hunt, was getting that before, has a new passive. Sivir gains 40% attack speed when Ricochet is active, and that's permanent. 
since it is a passive, as soon as you hit level 6, you will have this any time that you activate Ricochet. The active then, Sivir rallies her allies for 10 seconds, grants all nearby allies a 60% movement speed. It decays down to 20% after 4 seconds. So you get a huge surge of movement speed, and this is why people have been playing Sivir since her rework. People love this ultimate, and it's seen as being very, very strong. Uh, it's incredibly good for chasing, for catching up distance. It can also, of course, be very good for escaping as well, but her ult is, is very, very strong in any kind of team fighting context. Uh, I didn't think it would be that good, but it's basically like getting a like a massive Shirelius Reverie bonus for your whole team um, to everyone in the surrounding area. And it just, it's really, it's, it's especially good in solo queue where people tend to be disorganized, and it just makes it so easy to chase people down. If any one person's out of position, the whole team can just catch up to them and kill them. Uh, and it's it just, it's, it, I mean, people seem to be really liking this skill, and Sivir's win rate is actually very, very high since the rework. Uh, bit of a shame that her, her new portrait art is so atrocious. Her new portrait art is really, really bad, and the splash art is equally terrible. Fortunately, in this game, Cat8 is using the Huntress Sivir skin, and what that means is we don't have to look at that terrible Sivir artwork for this particular game. And we've got the nifty, sort of Australian-looking boomerang thing that's flying around. Anyway, there is action elsewhere, but we're going to continue to keep the focus on this bottom lane. Uh, battling going on in top lane. I think Teemo died or something like that, but whatever. We don't really we don't really care about Teemo in this game. We're going to keep our eye on Sivir. So despite the fact that early on it looked like Cat 8 was chunked really hard and it looked like this lane wasn't going to go that well, uh, actually they've now really regained control of this lane. Uh, they've actually ahead in farm. Cat 8 has a kill from that Vi gank earlier, so he's actually ahead in gold in this lane, ahead by about 500 gold, because that kill being worth quite a bit, and they seem to be doing quite well. Anyway, there out goes the Boomerang Blade, Ricochet has not been popped, Spell Shield's still on cooldown, and he's going to use her Tibber Stun, it's not going to get a kill right there. Nubby Pooh Bear, the Ezreal player, going to use True Shot Barrage to get some good rest. There's the Boomerang Blade, almost got the double hit on... Ezreal didn't quite land that, and so it's a, you know, it's a, some ultimates used on both sides, but ultimately nothing, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained right there. No big time loss in that particular exchange. Uh, I believe, that Ezreal, I think Ezreal used his barrier right there, since it looks like it's on cooldown, but other than that, not too terribly much going on. Anyway, we do have a Ramus gank coming in with Thresh Lantern, but that Annie stun is picture perfect, using the disintegrate, or incinerate, Excuse me, I always get this confused. Using the Incinerate stun to perfect effect, stunning Ramus, not letting him get his taunt off, and that's going to allow them to disengage. Uh, not going to be successful here, though. Vi is going to get caught by Ramus, and he's going to get, or she's going to be chain crowd controlled. The Ramus plus LeBlanc crowd control, actually quite effective, um, because the Ramus taunt sets up the LeBlanc uh, roots with their chain, and that's going to allow Blue Team to look to take this dragon, and they're actually in pretty good shape. This is Mandatory Cloud's Trundle running around, going to dump a pillar in there, but that's not really going to do anything. And there, there is not really any potential to steal this dragon. The Ramus jungler is there, he does have smite up, used smite, grabs the dragon, and so blue team's out to a pretty good lead, 5-2 to two in kills, they're ahead about 2,500 gold, and uh, I believe that they're really ahead in top lane, yeah, they're 1,000 a, a gold ahead in top lane. Teemo just died again, Lee Sin's farming behind tower. This is not a happy time for Panda, Teemo. Anyway, but we're going to go back to bottom lane. Sivir goes down, got caught there. Let, let, let me just go back and rewatch this quickly because I missed that. I wanted to see how it happened. Oh, look at that Thresh grab. So Docta, the Thresh player, grabs over the wall. Then the enormous slow from the box. Exhaust comes out, and that's going to be enough to pick this one up with an Ezreal auto attack. Nearly managed to get the con Thresh, but wasn't able to pick it up. And yeah, right there you see the death sentence coming out from Thresh, really setting up a nice play. So at this point, blue team is 3,000 gold ahead, and they're in very, very good shape indeed, uh, in a very, very strong position. So while that's going on, let's look at how Sivir is choosing to build in this game. This is what I've generally been seeing. The build here was double Doran's Blades into Bloodthirster. And, uh, I, I mean, you know, one Doran's, two Doran's is sort of a personal preference, but uh, Bloodthirster as first item definitely does seem to be the way that people are going. That's always been the way that people have built Sivir. The reason why people tend to go Bloodthirster first is, is sort of first and foremost, she needs that lifesteal sustain because of her short range. That's very common on short range ADs that they need that lifesteal in order to survive. Uh, but she also has very good AD scaling, particularly on her Boomerang Blade. As you can see, 195 plus 103 physical damage. So what is that? What is it? Uh, looks like it scales at about 0.6 ratio, something like that. But, uh, you know, has pretty good AD scaling. And this is her main damaging nuke early on, so it makes sense to stack up 
Uh, stack up some extra attack damage, go with the Bloodthirster. Sivir doesn't really get all that much from critical strikes. I mean, sure, you can build Infinity Edge on her, but she's not not someone who has any kind of in innate skill that scales off of crit strike. So, you know, get the Bloodthirster. It allows you to wave clear super hard, get the life steal, get the AD scaling. Pretty typical in terms of how people have built her, uh, you know, even before the rework, but continuing on to now. So, right now, in this bottom lane, just looking at Ezreal. Ezreal's gone ahead and gotten a Phage into a BF Sword. Kind of interesting, he's probably building a Bloodthirster alongside a Trinity Force, would be my guess. And right now the lane's fairly even, Ezreal's kind of caught up. Actually, Ezreal's actually has gotten ahead now as a result of that kill, and that dragon. Anyway, Annie Tibber's going to come out, doesn't really hit the mark. Right there now, Thresh is going to get a pull. Sivir's Spell Shield coming out, that's going to be one kill. And Thresh went in and just kind of gotten burst down, a lot of that damage coming out from Annie. Anyway, the, the Sivir Ultimate has been popped but it doesn't look like it's going to lead to a second kill. So, again, that was simply the burst damage from Annie and Sivir. Overwhelming Thresh right there. And, I mean, he even had a full Sight Stone. Sight Stone and Philosopher's Stone right there. I mean, again, granted, the Phyllis Stone wasn't doing anything in that fight, but uh, he did already have an item that gave him more health, so was probably just surprised at how much damage came out and, you know, got bursted down. So that is another kill for Sivir, and that's going to turn into a tower as well because there's not really anything Ezreal can do to hold on to this one. And that's going to give some much-needed gold over to Red Team. So they're, they're from being 3,000 gold behind, now they're back to about only about 1,000 gold behind. And obviously that's a big pickup for them. Cat 8 will be able to go back, grab his Bloodthirster, probably get some boots as well. Yeah, he'll be able to get Bloodthirster and boots if he wants here. And we'll see where he goes from there. So keep an eye on what's going on elsewhere. Yeah, right there, a kill picked up by this mid lane trundle, something you see very often, mid lane trundle. Uh, going to take get that kill on LeBlanc, and Night Blue, the Ramus player, going to run in, but doesn't look like he's going to be able to do anything. So go back to looking at Sivir. Anyway, did guess that one correctly, Bloodthirster, Boots of Speed. And in terms of the skilling order for Sivir, people generally max the Q first, as I think I mentioned, just because it's really good for harassing in lane, gives great wave clear, and then Ricochet second. There really is no need to put more than one point in the Spell Shield. You, you can pretty much get all the value you need with just one point in the skill. Uh, so then Q first and then W second, generally the way that people go. Alright, anyway, so with bot tower down, Ezreal, Thresh are still down here farming this lane. Sivir has the option to look to push mid, that would be one potential option. Or look to roam back to bottom lane again to hold that tower. Note that Annie is off roaming, roaming towards top lane actually, looks like heading towards top, but gonna get there a little bit too late. And poor Teemo, 1-5, having kind of a rough, kind of a rough game. So Sivir is 1v2 one one here, but again, this is one of the advantages of Sivir is that wave clear. Needs to get off another auto attack. There's the ricochet. Did you see how the one auto attack cleared three minions? So even though Sivir is 1v2 right now, uh, does have the, should have the skill set to be able to do that. Uh, as long as Cat 8 doesn't get grabbed by Thresh, did get pulled there, has to burn Flash, has to burn Ultimate, uh, but will be able to get out from that. Was able to flash over the box from Thresh. And uh, that's going to make it a lot tougher to hold this particular tower. We'll see if they try to hold it. Annie did roam top, did, uh, I believe, helped out in a fight that was going on up there. But again, this is why you have to be careful when you roam as a support, because the price was, ended up losing this bottom tower, which, you know, was questionable as to whether that was ultimately worth it. Probably wasn't in the end. So, I mean, you can feel free to roam as a support, but you do want to be careful when you do it. This was one case where it probably didn't work out in the end. Okay, anyway, so right there we've got the ricochet, and you can look at all the bounces jumping around. From minion to minion, there is the Q coming out, the boomerang blade. And let's see, is Ricochet going to come off of cooldown? Actually, no, just going to auto-attack. Possibly wants to lifesteal more health back off that Bloodthirster. And that's getting nicely stacked up as well. That's, what is it? It's uh, a little over halfway there in terms of max stacks. In terms of the larger game, this game's fairly close right now. Blue team is still ahead overall, and still leading in the global goal, ahead by one kill. And uh, look up here, Dragon's about to respawn, so that's going to be the next target. And uh, what's going on is Lee Sin and Ramus ended up running top. Well, that's not the worst move. Lee Sin has gotten extremely far ahead of Teemo, but it does leave this Dragon open. For the red team. I'm actually a little surprised that they're not going. Oh, they are going to go for it. Never mind. They just decided they wanted to feast on some tasty LeBlanc in mid before they went for that. So anyway, they're going to pick up that kill. And I, well, I'd assume that they'd go for this dragon. Perhaps not, but seems like that would be the obvious play. Uh, now that they've gotten a kill on the mid laner, and their jungler is. I keep thinking Trundle is their jungler, but of course he's not. Uh, it's mid lane Trundle. So the red team should be able to pick this up. If they can, then they'll be right... Actually, no, Ramus is here, so we might have another team fight. 
Anyway, let's keep an eye on this. Gonna go in and taunt Annie. Not sure if Annie's really the target that they want. Maybe. Anyway, the Sivir ult has been popped, so let's keep an eye on Cat 8. It is just chasing after Ezreal. Actually gets pulled by Thresh here. Now it's gonna turn in the opposite direction. Still has that ultimate running. Now is finally timed out. And wow, are they going to catch Ramus here? And wow, he is still alive with 100 HP. Uh, Ezreal was finished off elsewhere, but Thresh on 100 HP, Ramus on 100 HP. So the, not a lot of kills in that fight. Did get Ezreal, but that's about it. And everybody is a little bit too low to want to go after that dragon. So that was actually a successful dragon defense by the blue team. Did a good job there. Uh, still, we'll see if Sivir and Trundle can lifesteal. They might be able to go back and try it again. Then again, Lee Sin's full health. LeBlanc's full health, so probably not going to do that. You know, the only good thing for a red team right now is Teemo, who is extremely far behind, is finally getting the chance to farm a little bit. I mean, he's already died six times. He's really been having a rough go of it. All right, so who is going to get this dragon? Well, blue team is right here. Uh, are they going to be able to do this fast enough before red team gets there? Not 100% sure. Again, LeBlanc and Ramus do not exactly kill dragon very fast. Uh, Ramus going to pop his ult, and that is going to deal a lot more damage. There they go. Finally going to pick this one up. So yes, they do get it. And that actually is going to help blue team quite a bit. Look at that. They're out almost to a 4,000 gold lead by virtue of taking another tower in mid and by virtue of getting that that, uh, that particular tower. So, yeah, I mean, they're still... It's kind of their game to lose at this point in time. If you look at the gold total, Lee Sin is just so far ahead in top, and Ramus is also 1,000 gold ahead in the jungler matchup. Um, but anyway, what do we have? Uh, in bottom lane is the one where it's probably... Bottom and mid are close, but the other lanes are not doing that well for the red team. All right, anyway, let's check back on Sivir. That's the one that we're most interested in for this video. Has gone Boots 2 and has bought double double uh, attack speed dagger. So I don't know quite what that's going into. I guess we'll have to find out which item that's going to turn into later on. Uh, could be mm, could be Blade of the Ruined King, potentially, although that seems a bit a bit of an odd choice, but maybe. Could be for, could just be for a Zeal and a Phantom Dancer. That's probably more likely. Teemo, oh, manages to dodge that resonating strike, and Panda Teemo is going to manage to make it out of there. In mid, though, Ramus going to look to go in, going to look to uh, engage on Annie, and, well, LeBlanc is there, too, and just takes a big old bite out of that. So, blue team still pushing mid. Meanwhile, Sivir is just wave clearing down here. Not too much to say right now. Mandatory Cloud looked like he wanted to pick a fight, but there's four members of the enemy team there. Not sure that this is the fight that you want. Red team does get a kill up in top lane, but their mid tower is getting pushed, and they're going to need to survive in this particular fight. Anyway, right here, though, look at this. Thresh is going to get engaged on. He is going to fall. A nice use of the pillar coming out from Trundle, and then gets bursted down. So blue team overstaying their welcome just a little bit, and gives up a kill, and it's going to relieve all the pressure on that mid lane tower. Red team might even be able to counter push here. And we'll see if they're going to be able to get this tower in turn. Here's where one of the weaknesses of Sivir comes into play. Her very short range. Look how close to the tower she has to... Well, you can't see there, but uh, normally does have to get very close to the tower in order to auto-attack. And Cat 8 had better be careful he doesn't get taunted by Ramus. Actually, the spell shield just blocked an Ezreal Mystic shot. Ezreal Q right here. Vi going to look to force Ramus away. And that is indeed going to be a disengage for the fight, but a good sequence for Red Team. And... Now they're under, their deficit is under 3,000 gold, and they're still getting Teemo time to farm and desperately try to catch back up somewhat from this top lane that really has not gone well. Okay, let's see. Cat 8's going to go back to base. Let's see what he picks up. I'm guessing this is going to be a Zeal. I have seen this game, but I did not remember all of what he bought at different points in time. Okay, he did get a Zeal there. And that is going into Zeal, the attack speed dagger. Let's see. How much attack speed does he have? 1.13 right now. And 227 on his physical damage from a fully stacked Bloodthirster. Alrighty, so what's going on in this game right now? Looks like people are still hanging out in mid lane. Oh, right there, Vi gonna use the ult on LeBlanc, but Thresh has the Lantern, gonna get kill a cast out of there. Uh, presumably going to get out of there. Sivir is still down here farming in bot lane, so not so much to see there. And right here, yeah, that was the LeBlanc clone. Sorry, not gonna be, not gonna be a kill. And uh-oh, here comes Ramus. Is this going to turn into a fight? we still got a good battle coming in here. Sivir is racing up from the bottom lane, so we will eventually see Sivir here. Down goes LeBlanc to a Vi combo right there. And it's another fight that's gone very well for Red Team here. There's still just the 1v1 up in top lane, but in mid it's 4v3. And wait a minute, are they are they looking to go for Baron here? That, that seems like it would not be a very good call, especially since Teemo just died in top lane. Oh, is the Leandri's going to get this kill onto Lee Sin? No, it's not. 
But yeah, uh, for some reason they're going for Baron. Now this is not warded by the other team, but they seem to know it's going on anyway. And this this is a very questionable Baron call right now. I'm not not really sure why they think they can do this. They don't really, they don't even have numbers here, and they're taking tons of damage from doing Baron. Anyway, Sivir is going to get grabbed right now. Let's keep an eye on Cat 8. Has popped that ultimate, but the only one he can hit is Ramus, and that's not really who you want to be attacking in this fight. Thresh going to toss down the box. Everybody on red team is really, really low right now. Vi is going to get taunted. She has not fallen yet. Does get exhausted, but now Lee Sin has gotten into the fight. Ezreal's in the fight. This battle is not going well. Here comes Ramus. Going to flash over the Trundle Pillar. Gets a taunt onto Trundle, and now Sivir is the only one still left alive. Let's see. Can Cat 8 manage to get out of this? No does not manage to get out, and that was a very bad fight. That was a 2 for 4 from the red team's perspective. They are way, way behind in this game right now, and they might even be giving up a Baron here. Uh, no, never mind. Trun Ramus is not alive, so they won't give up a Baron, but that was not a good fight at all, and it puts them even further behind in this particular game. So, yeah, I'm not really sure why that Baron call came out. Uh, a, bit of a bit of an odd choice right there. Uh, while we're waiting for people to revive, let's take a quick look at this map. Look at how good the ward coverage is. There's a lot of stuff on the map for both teams, so pretty good. Not as good as you see in some of those professional level games, but for solo queue, this is this is pretty good stuff. And there's, of course, lots of little Teemo rice patties or little rice bundles from Panda Teemo stuck all over the map, too, in irritating spots. So in the larger picture, it's about, what is it, about a four and a half thousand lead for the blue team right now. Sivir has managed to finish the Bloodthirster and the Phantom Dancer combination. And uh, this seems to work pretty well. It's, I mean, it's a very standard AD build going an, a, an AD item into an attack speed item. And has now managed to max out that Ricochet as well. Right now, Ram is going to go in, but see, the one problem is Trundle can use Trundle ult to steal stats from Ramus when he has his defensive ball curl. Wasn't enough to save Mandatory Cloud that time. He did use his ult, but uh, this might not be the best fight for Blue Team. No, never mind. They were able to disengage. Thought that they might, you know, might not do that well if they continued, because if you notice LeBlanc, Ramus did get quite low. So that fight didn't go all that well either, but Blue Team not able to follow up on that and turn it into anything else from there. Timo's actually going to take that red buff. Might have been a little bit better on Sivir, hard to say. So we're kind of stalled out in the game right now. We're kind of waiting to see some kind of big play, a push, a tower dive, a Baron call. Uh, right here, wow, actually, blue team now making a call for Baron, and that is highly questionable. So Thresh goes down, trying to ward for that Baron attempt, and Baron has indeed been living up to its role as a noob magnet in this game. <laughs> a lot of questionable, highly dubious Baron calls coming out in this one. Okay, so Ramus going in again, going to taunt Vi. Let's watch what happens. As we see this, yeah, Vi is just going to get melted right there. And Cat 8 really needs to pick up some kind of armor penetration to deal with Ramus, so that when Ramus pops his defensive ball curl, he'll be able to start cutting through that. I'm sure that Last Whisper will be the next item for that very reason. But uh, right now, just can't do all that much. Not against Ramus, at least. Against the other squishy targets can. But not, not too much against Night Blue's very, uh, very tanky jungle Ramus. Uh, even as a Sunfire Cape on top of all of the... Uh, stats he gets from defensive ball curl. Yeah, he goes up to like 300 armor when that defensive ball curl is up. So anyway, what do we have uh, elsewhere? Not a lot going on right now, which is sort of a quiet moment. The dragon picked up by blue team, and I believe they've gotten all of the dragons in this game. I think that they have all three dragons in this particular one. So red team needs to get some really good fights if they're going to turn this one around. Need to catch people out, pick people off, that sort of thing. This red buff from Teemo actually working quite nicely on the Lee Sin player, but Lee Sin is able to jump to a ward, safeguard to a ward, and oh no, Teemo! Gonna get caught out. Yeah, that 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 about sums up this game for Teemo. 3-8-3, three, three, not, not having the game that that May 2nd would want, I'm assuming. Alrighty, so once again, it's a situation where Red Team needs to try and defend and look to turn a fight around if they're gonna hang in this one. Anyway, right here, so they're going to jump in, they're going to look to engage, Le Le LeBlanc is going to miss her chain, and let's go ahead and slow this down to half speed so we can watch. It's a great Annie Tibber stun, going to pick up one kill on LeBlanc. The Sivir movement speed ult is allowing everyone on this team to race after this fight, so that's now a second kill. And now Lee Sin is the last one still standing here in this fight. Thresh, Ezreal trying to get up there. Look at that beautiful kick coming out from uh, Lee Sin to get them out of it. We'll go back to normal speed here. But, uh, that, I mean, that Annie's Tibber has really set up that whole fight. But uh, now a great to pillar coming out from Mandatory Cloud's Trundle. Look at that Ezreal True Shot dealing a lot of damage. Is Ezreal going to be able to pick up any kills here right now? Actually, he is going to steal the blue buff 
picks up that blue steel and just continuing to poke over the wall. So that looks like that's all red team's going to get. They were not able to get the blue steel. Uh, some really good safeguard word jumps coming out from Lee Sid and a great Dragon's Rage kick to knock people back. But it was still a good fight. Relief pressure, picked up more kills. Uh, Sivir did end up with a double buff as a result of that fight. So all that stuff definitely helps. There's still 5,000 gold behind, but they're able to stop the pressure on their tower and hang in this one for a little bit longer. And, you know, get more time for Teemo to continue farming, who's been, as we said, very, very far behind this entire game. Anyway, we'll take a quick look at the numbers. Again, Lee Sin is still almost 3,000 gold ahead in top. Ramus is close to 2,000 gold ahead. That is where most of the advantage is coming in this match. Bottom lane, though, Sivir is actually has caught up to Ezreal. And uh, right there, while, while I'm looking at this, we get a pick over in the jungle. Two picks for blue team. And now they're going to look to turn around and go for this Baron. So keep an eye on that. Yeah, Sivir did in fact pick up that last Whisper, but it's not, not necessarily going to matter because blue team's on Baron. And check this out. This is in full view of red team. They have full vision of this. So this is going to require some kind of, you know, insane smite steal coming in from Vi. And let's slow it down to half speed. And who's going to go ahead and get the smite? It is indeed going to be a red team. Goes ahead and picks up that smite. So we get another Baron steal right here. And now in the chase that follows, uh, and he's very low, but it looks like that's going to be it. And right now, they're going back in. Double boomerang blade hit does go through on Ezreal, but not enough damage to finish him off. Probably would have killed Thresh, but he was able to step aside. And so yeah, the red team getting the miracle that they need. Proof of payment. The flash over the wall. The Baron steal. If you saw, there was a smite that came out early. Night Blue smited a little bit early on Ramus. And that allowed Vi to get the Miracle Baron steal, and that is going to help keep Red Team in this game. So this was a case where somebody on Team Vulcan, or now at Team XDG, Mandatory Cloud, where they actually maybe uh, were, were the beneficiary of a terrible throw around Baron, as opposed to all the throws that Vulcan did around Baron at the World Championships. Okay, let's see. Are we going to have a fight down here between Sivir and this Ramus? No, it looks like Night Blue is going to go ahead and get back to base. But Cat 8 starting to get very, very strong. 325 uh, flat AD with the Baron buff to extra attack damage. And it has 40 AP, which is... Does, does Sivir have any AP ratios? I don't think that she... No, she has no AP ratios at all. So AP Sivir is like as troll a thing as you can possibly build because she literally gets nothing from ability power. Not even one of... Actually, wait a minute. Right there. Oh, she does have a... Never mind. She does have an AP ratio right there. Look at that. AP ratio on her boomerang blade, but it's pretty, pretty low. Uh, what is he going to pick up here? Let's see. How much gold is Cat 8 sitting on? Well, he just picked up another BF sword. Oh, wow. So 360 damage right now. And that boomerang blade is hitting very, very hard. And the ricochet... Let's see. Yeah, ricochet also doing some nice damage as well off of all that AD. So we've got another situation where... Red team is on the defensive, but most of their team has Baron. I think about half of them have Baron right now. And in particular, Sivir has Baron as well. Sitting there at 524 on the game, level 17 is nearly maxed out. Uh, if you look at the spell shield, you can see the spell shield cooldown does decrease with more points in the skill, and you do get more mana back with more points in the skill. Now that said, it's still not really worth maxing that, anything other than last. Down here on bottom lane, no, it's Teemo. He's going to die yet again for his 10th death. And poor Teemo, a freaking Teemo, costing the team the game. So Teemo's going to lose the 1v1 in the split push battle. And that's going to force Red Team back into a defensive posture yet again as they try to hold out against the continued push of the blue team on the other side. So it looks like the fight's going to wrap up around this tower. So let's see, we're going to keep an eye on this. And right there, I'll slow it down to half speed as we get the engagement. Again, Rams is going to go in. He taunts Trundle, though. It's not really who you want. And Mandatory Cloud has used his ultimate to steal stat, defensive stats from Rammus, which is what he wants. Watch Cat 8 over here, looking to turn and focus Thresh initially. Uses the spell shield to get through. Or use the spell shield, I believe, to get through the uh, slow from the box. And now that's going to be enough to pick up Two kills right there. Teemo getting the kill on LeBlanc. And this fight has gone horribly wrong for Red Team. Again, I just think that the engage was was not the, what they wanted. They they put their, you know, got sort of that flash taunt on the Trundle. And he's not really the one you want to, to engage on. Again, remember, Trundle's ultimate drains a champion's max health and their armor and magic resist. So what Mandatory Cloud is doing in this game is he's using Trundle ult to drain stats from Rammus, who gets, you know, crazy armor and magic resist. From his, uh, from his defensive ball curl. So I think that they just picked the wrong target when they went in. They needed to flash an ult onto Sivir or something like that. And that boomerang blade is not going to hit, but 
Cat 8 still getting some good push on this tower. Look, I mean, yeah, look how much... Obviously, the tower takes a lot of damage when you're hitting it with almost 400 attack damage. Uh, <laughs> what is this? Do you know Do you know who I am? Actually, I do not know this Lee Sinclair. Not familiar with him. Anyway, down here, so let's see. Annie going to hit the blind stun into the, into the uh, brush right there. And they're going to flash after Trundle. That's going to be a kill. But now, maybe not the best fight right here. Going behind the tower... And let's see, Mandatory Clouds, Trundle going to get stunned, or rooted, I should say, by that LeBlanc chain. And that's going to be a kill. So they trade one for one. Are they going to be able to escape Ramus right here? Ramus going to get stunned by Annie. Uses the taunt on Annie. Again, probably wanted to use it on Sivir. And let's see what Cat 8 can do right here. Again, staying in the back in a very safe position, DPSing. Going to get one kill on Ramus. Gets exhausted, but still auto-attacking. Just not really touched in this team fight. Ezreal will flash away, but again, still auto-attacking. Going to pick up another kill right there. So that goes to 727. And the red buff slow combined with the Sivir ultimate. Oh, never mind. She did not have her ultimate up in that fight. But uh, the red buff slow really strong there. Just nobody really cr used their crowd control on Sivir. And so Cat 8 just able to auto attack using those ricochet procs, getting the extra bounces, getting the extra auto attack down, or getting the attack speed. 80% uh, attack speed while Ricochet is active. Just, uh, you know, auto attacking, not crowd controlled, and getting the bonus attack speed from that ultimate passive. So they're not quite going to get this tower. And right there, there is this Sivir movement speed ult. Going to use it to disengage. Probably not necessary, but you know what? It's not on a long cooldown. It's only on a 60 second cooldown. So by the time that red team goes back to base and purchases, by the time Cat 8 comes back, his ult's going to be back up again. So it's not really a big deal. Anyway, so keep an eye on when these ricochets get popped. Ricochet on a 5 second cooldown when the skill's maxed. Not really going to get much in the way of bounces against Baron, but we'll get a little bit of extra damage, I suppose. And now going to go back to base. How much gold is Sivir sitting on? 2,500 can get a quick silver sash. Can get a Guardian Angel. I, I think that that's close to enough for Guardian Angel. We'll see. Actually chooses to pick up. And look at this. I love this comment. The power of friendship in this team has evaporated. So I don't know what people on the blue team were saying. But it sounds like some people were a little bit unhappy. Wow, look at this. Ramus, the power ball in with the Shirelias. So, so fast. And freaking Teemo goes down yet again is going to fall right there. Actually, what Sivir has chosen to pick up, Cat8 has now gotten an Infinity Edge, so he <laughs> is stacking that AD in this game, and uh, it's getting to be a very, very scary, very, very scary Sivir. We're uh, sitting there on a five item build, and I guess could go for, I don't know, can go for a number of different things for that last item, a defensive stat or something. Let's see, going back for something else, sold the Doran's Blade, what is this going to be? And picks up a Negatron Cloak. So this is almost certainly Guardian Angel or Quicksilver Sash, one of the two. Either the extra cleanse or the ability to revive. All right, but overall in the game, 727, if you look at the gold, has way more gold than anyone on the team. And uh, is just roughly tied with Lee Sin on the other team for most gold in the game. Has really been keeping the team in these team fights. Uh, and, you know, Annie has actually played a really nice support Annie. The Annie stuns in these team fights have been really, really good as well. So anyway, it is, uh, what is it? The game's gotten a lot closer than before. Baron is about to respawn. 26 to 24. It's still still a lead for the blue team, but not by that much. About a 3,000 gold lead. And the towers are really evened up as well. It's 5 to 4 in favor of blue team. So as usual with these games at this stage, it's going to come down to how the engage happens, what happens, how if somebody gets picked off, that sort of thing. Who gets caught out of position. Anyway, right here, it looks like Ramus wants to engage. Out comes the Shirelius. And is this going to be the team fight? Yes, going to go in. But once again, as I slow this down, the taunt coming out onto Trundle. And Trundle has popped his ult and gotten bonus... Uh, gotten bonus stats from that. Now, LeBlanc's going to go down immediately. Sivir still DPSing in the back. Still not really touched in this fight. Thresh is going to do his best to use the box to slow, but everybody's just running right through the box. Popping all sides of it right there. A nice attempt at a flay comes out from Thresh. Lee Sin Q coming out. Exhaust goes out on the Vine. Not the worst target, but not really going to do a whole lot to protect Thresh. And that's pretty much going to be it. The whole front line crumbles. Again, just feels like Ramus maybe picked the wrong person to engage on. I just think that engaging on Ram or excuse me, engaging on Trundle, not really the way to go. Uh, fight continuing, Pillar goes down, not going to be enough to stop anybody in uh, in terms of Ezreal or Lee Sin, both very good mobility. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just feel like Trundle is not really the one to look to go in and engage on, because Trundle is just using his ult, 
stealing all those defensive stats and then surviving. So anyway, right here, tower goes down. We are going to see Teemo fall yet again for his 12th death of the game as both Nexus Towers fall as well. Keep an eye on Cat8 who's still staying back here, just using his uh, using his ricochet, using his boomerang blade. Is he going to be able to get a kill on Nubby Pooh Bear right there? And the boomerang blade comes out. Yes, going to pick that up with an auto attack and the ricochet. So it goes to 10 to 9 on the game. We'll pick this up. That's an ace. And that's GG, so red team. Despite being behind literally the entire game, they only got ahead in gold in the last 30 seconds of this match. Manages to come from behind, pick this one up, and take the win off of some uh, just a series of team fights where things didn't really go that well for blue team. Uh, can I pull up the Trundle stats here? I'll just highlight this for those who aren't familiar with Trundle again. Drains enemy health, drains their armor and magic resist, and so every time they're going in and taunting, you know, using Ramus taunt on Trundle, he would just steal the defensive stats from Ramus, steal all the stuff from defensive ball curl. So don't think that that was the best choice. And then Cat 8 Sivir just. You know, sitting there DPSing in the fights, using that ult for the movement speed, uh, auto attacking, boomerang blading, ricocheting, and using spell shield when people tried to burst them down. So anyway, that's a little bit of some of the gameplay of the new Sivir. As I said, Sivir is being played a lot in high elo and uh, is, is pretty popular right now. So my initial impressions, if you watch that, they were not correct. Sivir is actually pretty darn good right now. In any case, though, once again, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, hope people enjoyed this match, and until next time, I'll see you guys later, have a great week.